Welcome, everybody, to this season's first edition of Patriots Playback. I'm David Stearns, joined with Brian Schrems. Here as we talk 2014-2015, Potomac Patriots, Elite Division. These guys, uh, a new squad, a new era, under new leadership. But Schrems, we saw them tumble. They lost their first two games against a newcomer to the league, the Richmond Generals. First time we've seen them in the USPHL, familiar to them in the Metropolitan Junior Hockey League, but, well, they definitely have a, a contending team here in the elite division. No, they do, and uh, we saw probably a, a sizable rivalry develop this past Saturday night, about midway through the second period, and then uh, further reinforced in the in the third period. Very scrappy game, very chippy. Um, Good amount of hits. We saw some. We saw some outstanding goaltending from Richmond. But on the flip side of things, for Potomac, we saw a team um, relatively new to us, relatively new to the fans that we didn't necessarily see last year. The shots were there. The scoring opportunities were there. Um, finishing was was a bit of an issue. But uh, I, I think, given what we saw in the second and third period of that Saturday game, we have a lot to look forward to this season. And, and I think you have. A, a playoff bound team uh, on our hands here in Potomac. Yeah, and definitely when you take a look at the roster, uh, you see a lot. It's a good blend between new players, returning players, and players who have played elsewhere throughout the USPHL in seasons past. Uh, so it's quite an interesting dynamic that, you know, and obviously we have a new head coach who has experience with uh, Hampton Roads in Atlanta, so he's got a good kind of view on the way things are sh uh, shaped in the USPHL, but now he comes in and, uh, you know, he's the head coach of one of three teams in Virginia, and of course we saw the explosion on the ice between the two teams that are separated by nothing more than an hour, hour and a half without traffic, but in yep. Virginia usually that means four hours. So... Right. Saturday, yeah, uh, three nothing was uh, quite a disappointment to start with, but then uh, we kind of saw this resurgence come in the second period. Uh, great back and forth action from there, and then the passion took over in the third period. So why don't we jump into the interviews and get it from the players' perspective and work our way down to the assistant coach and then uh, up to the head coach. Let's uh, let's get their feedback on how they think they did this past weekend and how they'll do this coming weekend. All right, we're joined now on the phone with uh, Drew Curley. Drew, new member to the Patriots organization. First of all, welcome. And, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, for those out there that may not be familiar with, uh, you know, what kind of a player you are and who you are and where you come from. Thank you very much. Um, I'm from Ontario, California. That's where I played the last two seasons in the WSHL. Um, I like to think I'm a pretty physical, skilled defenseman, and I can join the rush and like to play offensive but I'm pretty good defensive at times, too. Now, out there on the ice uh, right now, I know maybe a little bit early to tell, but uh, uh, what pairing works best for you? Which which uh, partner out there on the ice uh, are you gelling with uh, quite well right off here in the early season? Right now I've been playing with Kevin McDonald, and I think that's been pretty good. So talk a little bit about this past weekend. Uh, it was a little bit of rough and tumble, and... This is the first time we've all gotten a chance to see the Richmond Generals play at this level. Uh, what was your impression of playing the Richmond Generals? And uh, dare we ask the question if there's a rivalry that is to be had between your two clubs? Uh, I thought Richmond was a pretty good team. I think uh, we're a pretty young team, so we're still getting used to the junior pace. But I think we'll be good. And uh, I think there is a kind of a rivalry brewing. It's a healthy rivalry, but... Definitely one coming. Shrems, you want to jump in here? Yeah, I'll jump in here. Um, just out of curiosity, you, you said you're paired with Kevin McDonald, a player who likes to jump up in the play just a little bit more. Um, do you consider yourself more of a shutdown defender, and, and if so, do you find that the balance works out between the two of you? You're a stay-home guy. He's a guy who jumps up into the offensive just a little bit more. And um, Tell us who you kind of model your play after. Is there an NHL player who you try and uh, kind of be like a little bit more than others? Um, I, I like to think I'm pretty defensive, but I can also be offensive at times, which I think is a good mixture with me and Kevin McDonald because when he rushes in the play, I can stay back. When I rush in the play, he stays back. I think it's a good combination. And if there's one player I like to model my game after, is I'd like to see Kimo Timonen with the Flyers. He's offensive at times, defensive at times, but he's 
just sound defensemen. Nice. And uh, re- referring to this past weekend, uh, we spoke with Coach a little bit beforehand. Um, and he was telling us about how he, he feels this is the best um, defensive core that he's ever seen put together. What are you uh, in the the other defensemen? What are your what are your goals for the year? Um, is, is there something that you're doing differently this year than you've ever done before, or is this style of play with Coach something you're very familiar with? Um, I, I'm pretty familiar with it. I mean, definitely would like to be as a decor, be offensive yet defensive at the same time, and just try to play as shut down as we can. Um, and I think I think this is definitely one of the strongest decor I've ever been a part of too, both skill wise intensity-wise and physical-wise, just everything, we have it all. Okay, start. All right, thanks, Drew. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Joined now with Corey Medeiros, the newest member of the Potomac Patriots, a familiar name, uh, if you will, usually on the other side of the score sheet, but this time he joins our side of the score sheet. Uh, Corey, welcome aboard, and uh, hey, tell tell the people out there a little bit about yourself. Uh, we know that you're uh, a familiar name because uh, you played with the Hampton Roads Whalers prior, but uh, let's hear it directly from you. Uh, thank you. And, uh, yeah, so I went over to play for Hampton last year for Andy. Um, you know, it was the first year I met him. Uh, I thought I grew a lot as a player. Um, I get into the rush a lot. I... I'm quick, I'm agile, I got a lot of speed, and I consider myself a playmaker and a leader on the ice. Now talk a little bit about this past weekend. You know, it was kind of like the first little, uh, I guess, display in the regular season for you guys to kind of show the USPHL, which you guys are all about, uh, being a new squad. Uh, obviously, you're you're familiar with Andy, but maybe the returners from last year that were under R.J. Ziegler, uh, as he's now the GM, uh, talk a little bit about how you f- uh, you guys felt as a team out there. I know it was a little bit of a rough going, and Richmond uh, <laughs> and Potomac suddenly uh, have this uh, spark between the two of them that's not necessarily a good one uh, from the display that we saw at the end of Saturday's game. But uh, how did it feel out there as, as, a, as a team? You know, as a team, I, I thought uh, we're, you know, we're still getting to know each other. You know, we're a young team, as Curly said. And uh, I think this past weekend uh, really showed our true colors. I think... Uh, we have a lot to approve on, but then yet yeah, we we have a ton of skill on the ice. We have the team to do it this year. We have the coach to do it. Um, you know, we have the organization. You know, everything's on the table for us. I think um, this weekend uh, we showed a lot of heart. You just gonna come up on top, and I think that uh, as we move forward, we will uh, we'll be ready for them again. Now, speaking of moving forward, this coming weekend, uh, you guys uh, get on the road for the first time in the regular season, this time going down to East Coast. Uh, you guys are going to be there two weekends in a row, but this time, this first weekend, you'll be playing East Coast be- before you participate in the showcase they'll be hosting the following weekend. Talk a little bit about the expectations in those two games coming up, because Potomac and East Coast from last year and the year prior always seem to be pretty even uh, as far as uh, as far as the matchup goes, but what are you guys going to do to come out on top uh, at East Coast? You know, the the attitude in the locker room is simple. You know, we want to win, we want to work hard, and uh, uh, this this last weekend we were pretty disappointed in uh, you know the outcome. And I think uh, we've been working a lot. We've mixed up the lines a little bit. Um, you know, tr- trying to get scores on the ice together, and you know, r- really mesh as a team because I don't think we've had the chance to do that yet, but. This past weekend, we're looking for wins, and, and we're not going to come up short of that. All right, I'll have Shrems jump in here with a couple of questions. Shrems. Yeah, we'll jump into uh, last weekend a bit. Picked up yourself uh, a couple points last weekend. Um, I believe a, a helper. Uh, my, my thing is I'm trying to gauge on the score sheet. Uh, you seem to be all over the place with in terms of line mates. Um, you got a helper on, I believe, Josh Maltz's goal in the uh, first Saturday night game. What... Um, What's the dynamic that you you find the most um, appealing to you so far in terms of line mates? Who's clipping? Uh, um, and and talk a little bit about uh, your style of play a little bit. What do you bring to your line mates? Uh, definitely. Um, well, you know, last year at Hampton, I for half the year I I played with Josh Maltz, and you know this year we're we're just we're trying to pick up where we left off last year. We uh, we really mesh well together. You know, we find each, we find each other on the ice. We, we we're basically the same player on the ice. He's quick. We we both have speed. We both have hands. You know, we can move the puck. We can put the puck in the net. And um, you know, this year we're, we're only getting better. And uh, 
you know, for for me, I think to have a player that plays just like you, I got you got the speed, you know, you got the hands. Um, we, we just find each other on the ice, and we uh, we have an addition. We just added Gray to our line, and I think uh, that'll that'll work out really well. And we're excited to see how it plays out. Did um did the uh, excuse me, was the coach adamant about keeping you together, um, you and Maltz and, and even Addison on, on defense, uh, just because of your experience with one another? Is, is, that the, uh, is that the agenda going forward this year, or are you going to see some, um, some different line mates along the way here? Yeah, I, th- I think he's, he's keeping me and Maltz together for the year. He, he saw the magic we could bring last year, and, and he knows we can only get better from there. So he's uh, I think he's going to keep us together, and you know, we're only going to get better. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Corey. Uh, good luck this coming weekend against East Coast. Thanks, Justin. All right. We're joined now with a returning player. So no more new players in this week's uh, Patriots playback. We got Nick Gray on the line here. Nick, you had a goal in Saturday's game in uh, kind of a difficult uh, home opener, but uh, talk a little bit about what the attitude in the locker room is this year. You guys are uh, – not with RJ on that bench. You got Andy Newton. Talk a little bit about the difference between the two years, uh, starting out this year compared to last year. Yeah, um, the locker room, the talk in the locker room is a lot more focused, I believe, like this year. Like past years, have, um, we've always been focusing, but this year I think we're trying to become like more of a team after the regular season, more of a playoff kind of team. So everyone's focusing. And, well, the ice, I mean, Richmond, we came, they came out really hard to us, and we didn't expect it. And yeah, so that's like a rivalry building there. I think we'll be ready for him next time we play him. And uh, yeah, this year with Andy, I think things are like I said earlier, like things are a lot more serious. Like it's more of like everyday kind of thing. Before we were a little bit relaxed, so it was kind of like a building year of the Patriots. We just kind of started out, so now that things are rolling, I think we'll be doing better. Now, if I understand this correctly, uh, has Andy put you in the captain role? Um, as of right now, we have no set captains or assistant captains. Okay, because uh, I know with the uh, the ceremonial face-off, uh, we had the captains come in. Uh, you took that face-off, correct? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, uh, so talk a little bit about it then. Uh, you know, are you being looked at as a leader for this team? Because, you know, uh, you being one of the few returners uh, as this team has kind of become a little bit of a hodgepodge of people with previous USPHL experience on different teams, and then we got Potomac Patriots returners, and then just altogether new guys being brought into the system. Uh, talk about what it means to be, you know, kind of in that leadership role, if you will, that people look towards. Because uh, last year, uh, when you were brought into the fold, it, it was last season, correct? When you're brought over from um, Ashman. Oh, no, that was the year before. That was the year before. Wow, time is getting away from me. So talk about the, the, the leadership role that you uh, that you bring to this team. Um, well, I believe, yeah, I'm a leader on and off the ice. I started during the summer, and just being a returner, it's a lot easier. You know, like, the functions. You know what everyone expects of you. And then, uh, yeah, just off the ice, leading in warm-ups, like, for before games or just after practice, off-ice kind of stuff, and just trying to get people focused before games and – on the ice, you calling out different drills of what we're doing. Everyone knows what we're doing on warm-ups, but just calling out what time, like, we're switching up the drills and, and on the bench, make the energy, make it keep going, and just trying to prove, like, my leadership on the ice, too, like, trying to get a goal there. And then uh, I got the second goal, which made it 4-2 to two in the Saturday game, and then missed that uh, empty net on uh, the same, I think it was maybe a uh, one play after, mm-hmm. so that kind of rattled me. I tried to get everyone pumped up after that, but that didn't really work very well. Hey, Shrimps, you got any questions for Mr. Gray? Yeah, I'll jump in for one. Um, pick up a goal in both games this past week on one shorthand and one on the power play. Um, is this a role that you're used to seeing um, shorthanded and uh, man advantage work? And, uh, you know, is it, is it something that you're comfortable with? Do you prefer one or the other, or is it kind of uh, just – kind of second nature for you either way yeah it's just like uh shorthanded there's always there's always more room and i just got me and addy or addy got a lucky break there and he got on a two-on-one he fed it right through under the guy's stick and it was i didn't think it was actually going to go in but it did you know i just worked out and on the power play 
I was working up top, and then we switched up the power play, and I was working in front of the net, and that actually worked out a lot better for me. Knowing that, like, when me, me and Mikey Carr with the speed down low, he uh, moved behind the net, and I just went out front and fed it right to me. Yeah, so a role that you see yourself in, both uh, met that down a man and uh, up a man this season, something you're comfortable with. Yeah, um, I'm pretty comfortable with it. It's like I'm used to the extra ice time usually, and uh, definitely on Ashburn how we used to have a lot of ice time, like a lot of the same players from now all the time. And now bringing it to the junior league is just kind of like a second thing. Thank you, nature. Cool, starts. What's the plan for this weekend against East Coast? I mean, you guys have got to be out for blood after what they did in the playoffs to you guys last season. Uh, and you guys are usually pretty evenly matched. Uh, but this year, a little bit more talent on the team with uh, the addition of um, some of the former Hampton Roads Whalers. Uh, so what is what is the plan for uh, Saturday and Sunday? Uh, yeah, the boys are pumped. We need to get our first win. Hopefully we can sweep the weekend and uh, come out 500. And yeah, I wasn't able to play in the playoffs last year because of my injury that mm-hmm. I injured. That I broke it in December in my collarbone, and then broke it again in February, so Ugh. I wasn't able to play <laughs> in the actual playoffs. But yeah, I'm ready. I haven't played East Coast in a while, so I'm ready for them. So, are you 100% recovered yet? I mean, uh, is that collarbone yeah. completely back to normal? Good. <laughs> yeah, it's all together now. All right. Well, uh, good luck this coming weekend, and we'll catch up with you soon. Uh, thank you. All right. Thanks, Nick. Joined now with assistant coach, is it just Creech, or how shall we, we identify you? I mean, are you a one-name kind of person? Are we going Zach Creech, or who's, how should we go by? <laughs> well, uh, well, officially, I guess you go, but it's Brian Zach Creech. Okay. Um, uh, actually, Zach is my middle name. I started getting called that, actually. I played football um, as an ankle biter, and there was like three – Ryan's and Orion on the team, so obviously at six, seven years old, when anything <clears throat> that sounds like that gets said, we all would run towards the coach. There you go. Um, so he finally said, you know, what's your middle name? I said it was Zachary. He said, all right, you're going to be Zach, and that's sort of just stuck ever since uh, with sports anyway. I'm sure your parents love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, funny, too. Uh, you know, when I first started playing hockey, my mom would be Zach or Brian, and one of the moms eventually said, you know, how many kids do you have to play hockey? And she goes, just the one. She was like, well, who's Brian? Um, of course, <laughs> my mom had it to <laughs> explain the situation. Of course, of course. Well, you got a bit of a history with the organization. Uh, you were a former statesman, so uh, and you've known RJ, our current GM, uh, for the longest time, and uh, you're pretty familiar with the way things are set up around here. But uh, Let's talk about your role now. It was kind of a surprise for me when I walked in the rink during uh, the end of training camp and I looked under the ice, you looked at me, you gave me the nod. I'm like, I know that guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so talk about how you were brought into the fold. Uh, I mean, you're you're technically as a coach in training, if you will, but no, you're assistant coach yep. Creech. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I guess, the label I'm given right now. Um, <clears throat> like you said uh, previously, I did uh, play for the Statesman. Um, I'm born and bred a uh, Virginia boy. I um, uh, played my hockey youth and juniors out of this rink. Um, well, the original rink, as right. I like to say, it's a real rink. Unfortunately, it collapsed, but obviously it's a great facility that we uh, play out of and have to work with for the boys. Um, but, yeah, I played uh, I was actually uh, <clears throat> the enforcer, if you will, for RJ's first junior team, um, and I knew had known RJ previously. I'm um, just playing my youth hockey here as well. So um, friendship started at a pretty young age, um, and it's probably going on 10-plus years now. Um, so I aged out at 20, and pretty much the last six years I've been trying to get RJ to let me get somewhat involved. Um, and uh, finally um, the opportunity presented itself, and uh, he gave me a call. So it was an exciting day to get that call, and, you know, I've just been excited and <clears throat> appreciative of the situation on, as, a, as a whole. So what do you see out of this team so far? I know it's a pretty early season. You guys went through a full training camp. Uh, you did a preseason showcase up in Philadelphia and then a couple of games down at Liberty. Uh, so talk a little bit about what your impressions are after seeing them in their first two regular season games against Richmond, uh, a newcomer to the USPHL. Right up. <clears throat> well, I mean, on paper right off the bat, I mean, I think we look, we look amazing. Um, but obviously just on paper isn't going to win us hockey games. Um, I believe some of the boys sort of touched on it earlier when you spoke with them. Uh, obviously, they're new. We do have some young kids, uh, first-year juniors and stuff. So, obviously, um, the younger guys that are first-year juniors 
come in from you know a double A triple A level. There's definitely a um, uh, <clears throat> a level of play that they need to get themselves to to uh, be effective for us. Um, but I think as a whole, I mean, you know, if we can get these boys, you know, to fall into our systems and trust us as coaches and believe what we have to say, I think, you know, this could be a really, really fun season because uh, we have all the pieces of the puzzle as far as I'm concerned. It's just a matter of uh, them falling in our systems and becoming a team, a family. And um, I preach that to them as much as I can. Um, you know, you're not just a team. You're not just a teammate. You know, you're a family. You're brothers. Um, and you sort of have to have that you know, men, mindset to be an effective hockey team and win games as far as I'm concerned. Now talk a little bit about the systems. You know, this is kind of a new thing, a new concept for this organization. Uh, given the the last couple of seasons, just it was always kind of a separate show between you know what RJ was doing uh, with Rick Heldreth on his side, and then what Matt Little and Steve Sherman were doing on the other side. You guys are now kind of cross pollinating between the elite and the Empire squads. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the trickle down effect in that, and uh, what you hope to gain out of that. Um, <clears throat> well, systems. I mean. I, I like to go at a simple way, you know, try to make it as basic as possible for these guys. Because um, I mean, hockey is a thinking man's game, as Andy Newton will say. Mm. Um, but uh, <clears throat> you can overthink it as well. And I think for the most part, the guys are sort of doing that right now. Um, our systems are not, you know, it's not a very hard concept um, that we're trying to throw at these boys at all. Um, it's very simple, you know, supporting the puck. You know, don't fly out of the zone. Um, make simple passes, and you know. Less stick handling overall, um, quicker with shots, and you know, just basic hockey. Really, I mean, there's really nothing too extreme about the systems we're trying to implement with these guys. All right, hey, uh, as the former enforcer of the statesman here, uh, <laughs> you you had to have been kind of enjoying yourself in a weird way watching Saturday uh, towards the end of the game unfold. I mean, unfortunately, it did end up with some disqualifications for some players, but. Yeah. Uh, Talk a little bit about uh, kind of that scrappiness that you've seen out of this team so far. I mean, up against Richmond, it's like, okay, we got ourselves a rivalry brewing here. I, I, I Absolutely. I feel it coming. <laughs> well, I'm <clears throat> being um, an enforcer when I did play it, but I also did play in uh, a junior era where we played NHL rules. Um, you know, if you wanted to go with somebody, you, you went and did your business, and you went in the box and sat for five minutes, and then you you know got back on the bench, you got ready for the next year. Um, unfortunately, you know, USA Hockey as a whole is trying to, you know, X out the fighting, which, you know, I obviously don't agree with, but, you know, there's nothing I can really say about that. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously there's no fighting, but at the junior level, um, that intensity is going to be there. There's going to be, you know, the muckers, the grinders, the stuff between the whistles. Um, and what I've tried to tell these guys really is, you know, you can't fight. You know, if you fight, you're going to get kicked out of the game. You're going to find yourself suspended, um, and you're no good to us then. Um, so try to keep your head as much as possible. You know, if somebody does something dirty, get their number, and, you know, you'll find them um, on the ice somewhere with the puck, and, you know, put a clean head on them. Mm -hmm. um, definitely at the end of the game on Saturday, was uh, it was definitely uh, different for me. Um, being on the bench now as a coach, uh, there really wasn't much I could physically do. <laughs> I <was gonna> grab <laughs> some guys that were trying to stand up on the bench. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely, it's, uh, <laughs> it, I just sort of laugh at it, to be honest. It's because, like I said, they can't fight. So, I mean, I, for the most part, I just try to get them to not, you know, think about that. Um, beat them on the scoreboard because that's where it counts the most. You got it. Hey, Shrems, you got any questions? Yeah, you know, I'll jump in uh, real quick. Um, Saturday's game, the one that we were able to see, um, came out of the gate a little bit slow, got down 3 nothing, picked up one before the intermission, um, kind of regroup in the intermission, come back out. Um, with a relatively full head of steam, um, set up a, a very controversial goal against you, whether or not the net was off, and by the way it was off, um, it still counted on the scoreboard. But after that, the team that we saw on the ice was exponentially different than the first period. Um, oh, yeah. You guys ran into a hot goaltender as well. Um, kind of played his, his tail off. But the, the scoring chances that we saw from that team in the second and third period, the shots on goal, the quality, uh, the quality rebound opportunities, um, not what we were really used to from a team that we saw last year maxing out at 19, 20 shots per game. You guys posted over 40 shots. First, what, what on earth did you say in the locker room to, to get that team, you know, as fired up and, and as productive as they were? And, 
you know, how do you how do you coach a situation where, you know, finishing is is, is not happening and the goaltender when you do have a chance to finish is, is just standing on his head. Right, and that's that's sort of one of the things in practice, um, when it comes to shots. You know, we've been a lot of these guys have a bad habit of wanting to shoot high. They wanna you know, they want that top ten ESPN highlight goal. And, you know, it I've told them, you know, it doesn't matter how the puck goes in that, as long as it crosses that goal line and the ref points at the goal and says it's a goal, it's a goal. Um, and I think that's where we sort of ran into on um, Saturday. One, obviously, we ran into a hot goaltender. Um, I think more than <clears> – <throat> I think his best aspect of that goalie's game was his glove. Um, he was everywhere with that thing, and that's one of the things mm-hmm. we try to tell the guy, too. It's like, hey, how many times are you going to shoot his glove? We know he's good. Start picking other spots to shoot. Um, but I think a lot of the shots that we took as well were, you know, guys trying to go high, and it's, you know, that's selfish as a player when you've got, you know – an odd man rush, or you got bodies in front of the net, and you're looking to shoot high. Um, and something we've preached since, you know, early before training camp um, with the shoot low, you know, shoot weak side, leave yourself another opportunity to potentially score. Um, and they didn't necessarily do that well on Saturday, but I mean, yeah, I mean, 42, I saw it on the bench myself because I believe after, I think about seven minutes left in the first period um, was when we really started to grab that extra gear and get her going, and um, <clears throat> I think we were 12 to 7 shots, and I believe at the end of the first it was a lot closer, and then obviously the second and third is just domino effect. Um, but, you know, in the locker room, it's just going back to the Liberty game, the first game, they played phenomenal. Um, we didn't expect the outcome. Obviously the score is a little different um, than what we actually saw, but, I mean, just overall when they played Liberty, they, they played great, and me and Andy sort of touch back on that here and there. When we get find ourselves in the situation that we did after the first period of Richmond, you know, ask them, where's, where's that team? Where's that drive? You know, you guys need to find it because, you know, the team that played against Liberty that first game was just phenomenal um, overall. All right. Well, uh, we're going to save some questions for uh, the big guy uh, on the other big side. Guy. But uh, thanks for stopping by, uh Assistant Coach Creech, and uh, we'll catch up with you after this coming weekend against East Coast. All right, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we finish out here with head coach Andy Newton. Coach, well, you guys had uh, quite a few practices here this week and uh, enough time to reflect on what happened this past weekend at Ri- or against Richmond, uh, home and away. Uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on how this past weekend panned out for the opening of this 2014-2015 season. First off, you know the, the, the weekend in the whole was a disappointment. We had high hopes coming into it, both as uh, as, as uh, myself and Creech's coaches and boys in the locker room had high hopes that we were going to come in and at least get ourselves a couple of points. Um, hopefully, you know, getting uh, sweeping the weekend and getting getting four points. Uh, Every year that I've been in this league, uh, we started on a high note. Half the reason why we had our training camp early in, in uh, August, we wanted to get a good six weeks of practice in and try to hit the first week of uh, regular season in, in somewhat of mid-season form. So it was a disappointment, but getting some uh, competition under the belt and getting some games under the belt, we had a good idea. We have a much better idea now on, A, what the team needs in practice, and then, B, what players need to be where and so on and so forth. So. Now, now, you. This was the first time we've seen Richmond come out. Uh, you know, in the USPHL, obviously, just coming out from uh, the Metropolitan Junior Hockey League, and that. Uh, what were you expecting on Richmond? I know you had a little bit of time to see them uh, play in uh, preseason action, and that. Uh, one of the things that we talked about uh, was special teams, and that seemed to have been kind of a something that worked in Richmond's favor. Uh, talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, first off, um, Richmond and your expectations on them coming into the weekend, and then what you saw with special teams. Uh, on what I saw what I saw of them when they played Liberty is I saw you know, a team that wasn't going to back down. They were always going to be in your guys' or in our face and, and push us to, to beat them. They weren't going to be a team that was going to roll over and let us walk away with a, with a win. And I try to communicate that to the boys. What I was actually surprised with when we saw them, I thought I think we have good team speed across the board from from offensively down to defensively. I think as a team we're we're pretty fast, and they definitely had a lot of quick forwards on their team that matched up well with some of our forwards. Well, hand in hand, I, I would like to think that they're a little bit faster than us. Um, special teams wise, and with me coming into this program and being new to the program, 
and we've spent all summer long and in the first couple of weeks of practice working on our five on five system we we have barely brushed over what we're expecting on the special teams and hmm. special teams is a big portion of the game but we have not spent a lot of time on that yet uh, we've done some chalk talks on it we've definitely done some video review from liberty and we've had a practice or two that we've actually worked on it but trying to find players and, and putting players in the right positions and, and then find, finding the go-to players that a can execute what we're asking for on the power play and then b that, that can um, that have the patience to allow them to execute so we need to get back to the drawing board and bring these kids back onto the ice and continue to work on our special teams so the next time we play them it's not a it's not just a special teams war with it, with uh, with a team that's extremely well on their their power play and their penalty kill for that matter. Now talk about uh, some of the players that uh, may have surprised you this past weekend. Who in your mind stood out on your roster that uh, you maybe didn't see coming up, you know, big in uh, some of the moments that may or may not have made it to the score sheet? Uh, the, the biggest kid that comes to mind is, is Kurt Schenick. Uh, we've only seen him in, in two games, and that was against Liberty. And even in those games, he really didn't stand out like and that had a, a demanding game or a, a very effective game. And we've seen him for probably about a month or so now out of practices. So coming into that weekend, I didn't I didn't think that he was going to be as effective as he was. He did not get himself on the scoreboard, but when he was on the ice and he had the puck on his stick, he definitely controlled the play. He had a lot of uh, good rushes into the offensive zone. I believe he did have um, a good opportunity to get an assist by setting up either Jack Strykars or... Uh, or Stephen Gerke in the slot by just having some patience looking off the play and finding the guy in the, the top of the slot. Another player that comes out to mind would be um, uh, Kevin McDonald. Halfway through the first period when things weren't necessarily going our ways, he definitely picked up his tempo of play by, by again, controlling the play, getting the puck on his stick, and if he didn't have an option to, to send a quick, quick easy pass, he would gain the red line and make sure the puck got in past their defense and so we can establish a floor check. So off the bat, I would go with uh, Turchenik and McDonald were the two players that definitely stuck out. Well, since we covered the forward and defensive roles, let's go to the goaltending department there. A uh, little bit of a rough start there for Parsons uh, to start off the season, calling in um, yeah, Dustin Moyer to fill the shoes after letting in a few goals there. Uh, talk a little bit about the goaltending situation right now. You rocked out with Moyer through the rest of that game on Saturday and then continued with him into Sunday. Talk about uh, between the pipes. Right now, the, like you said, we started with uh, Brian Parsons on on Saturday and he let three past him. And I'm, I'm one to, to put a goal on my forwards or, or the five guys in front of my goalie's shoulders very quick and and in that game with Parsons in the net, the, the three that got past him, two of them I will put on put on Brian Parsons' shoulders real quick. Uh, the the second one I definitely feel he could have had, and the third one I feel he, he could have had. Moyer went in there against a team that was uh, running on all cylinders, and he was able to keep him keep him shut out pretty much, and he made some, some big saves. Going into Sunday's game with the way that Moyer uh, finished out Saturday's game, Moyer had to start with Isaac backing up, and again we lost that game. Uh, four to two, but Moyer allowed uh, three, and the fourth one was an empty netter. And of the three that Moyer got past him, I, I would like to think that two of them were definitely on on Moyer's shoulders, and and one of them was on the team in front of him. By no means do it, do I ever go out and blame one person or one position for a for a loss. There's, obviously, there's a lot of mistakes that happen before the puck gets in the back of the net. But right now, the the starting position, whoever's got the pipes on on Saturday this coming weekend in East Coast. That's up for grabs. Uh, I got three guys that on any given day can be a starter here, and nobody has really grabbed that and, and said it. You know, they want it to be theirs by both their practice play and their game play. So coming into this weekend, I got one more practice this week. Uh, these boys got more or less uh, 80 minutes to show me that they want some ice time this coming weekend. Yeah, let me ask you about Saturday's game. You know, when uh, Moyer let in the one, the, the lone goal that he did, uh, what were your thoughts on that? I don't know if you saw it from, you know, the video footage uh, with the guys, but uh, what was your impression on that goal as it happened? Um, I haven't gotten to that point in the video, but if my memory serves me correctly, we uh, it was a defensive zone breakdown with a shared responsibility in front of the net. Mm -hmm. We left the guy open in front of the net, and he, and he popped one in. Mm -hmm. Well, then that, but without yeah. Me, 
Sorry. With without me watching the video and seeing it again, um, just reflecting on on back on the game, I everything is blurry from from yeah. Saturday's game to Sunday's game right now. Okay. No, fair enough. Uh, Shrems, you got any questions here for Coach Newton? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in with a few. Um, we asked uh, Coach Creech a little bit to elaborate, but we'll get your your full perspective on it. Um, team came out a little slow, a little flat on Saturday. Um, had an unfortunate goal go against them to start that second period. Um, whether or not the net was off, you'll have to see. Um, from our advantage, it might have been off. Definitely, definitely deflating it, especially since you you potted one right before the first uh, intermission there. But um, something something happened in that locker room between the first and second period to where the team that we saw in the second and third was like no team we've ever seen before. And and Coach Creech uh, alluded to it, uh, the Liberty game. He said it's a team like you've never seen before. And, and, and that's certainly what we saw in that second and third period. It was it was tough not being able to uh, to capitalize on the scoring chances. Uh, that with a, a hot goalie that you were facing against in, in Richmond, you know, obviously not the outcome you were looking for, but... You you had to have noticed it yourself. There was a different team out there for the second half of that game. And and what do you, as a coach, in the, in the, in the first intermission, what are you saying to your guys to to kind of pump them up to that level? A couple different things. First off, you know we have to. We spoke about having a winning mentality and what it takes to have a winning mentality. And when they roll over the board, these kids have to have a certain level of attitude, and and that attitude needs to be. Quite frankly, it needs to be, I'm better than that guy, and I'm better than that guy, and my team's better than their team. And when we roll over these boards, I don't care if my fourth line's going against their first line or, or any combination, that when they roll over the boards, that they have enough confidence and enough attitude in, in themselves and in their teammates that they're going to be able to go out there and dominate the shift. So the first thing we spoke about was, was having a winning mentality and what it takes to have a winning mentality. The second thing was trust. We have to be able to, in order to play a system where one guy is responsible for doing one thing and the next guy is responsible for doing his job, you have to have trust in your teammates for him to do his job so I can do my job. And in the first period, uh, there was not very much trust. Uh, there was a lot of hesitation and a, and a lot of uh, missed miss assignments out there on the ice. Um, the reason why I try to give a, a team such a complex system is to to hopefully take the winning and losing of games off of their shoulders and put it on my myself and, and Coach Peach's shoulders. If, if we go out there and play a system to a T and we still lose a hockey game, then the boys in the locker room can point their fingers back at the coaching staff and say that system doesn't work. So we spoke a lot about the X's and O's and, and about having a winning mentality and having trust in, in one another and if F1's doing his job, F2 and 3 have to do their jobs in order for everybody to be on the same page. The, uh, and, and going back to a point that you made, the um, special teams, you said you haven't developed it quite as much as you would have liked to, um, but you also mentioned the speed that you have. And during that second and third period, there were, there were points where you were down um, continually a man. And I want to say there was, uh, there was a point in that second period where there were two or three penalties against you but you would have never known it out on the ice. The speed completely caught Richmond off guard, and uh, a number of odd man shorthanded rushes going back the other way. Uh, not something we're used to seeing with this team. Couple that with the shots that we saw this weekend, um, pretty much doubled, um, sometimes tripled what we saw from last year's team. What are you doing to get these guys to shoot a little bit more, and how are you going to um, how are you going to approach the shorthanded uh, business now that you know you have the ability to? you know, capitalize shorthanded um, given what you have. Well, when when we got into the second period, we were down, I want to say we were down by three to one at that point, mm -hmm. and, and we had to score goals. Yes, we need to kill off penalties, but we have to get ourselves back in the game. Obviously, Richmond had a lot of momentum at that point of the game, and we had to do something. I had to make adjustments on the bench to get some more momentum back in our in our favor. Going into the game, the players that were killing the penalties were not slotted to start killing penalties. I, I did not have any plans of using Mikey Carr on a penalty kill. I didn't have plans of using Corey Madero, so Josh Maltz on the penalty kill. Nicholas Gray was uh, was put down to, to kill penalties, but in that situation where we needed to score goals, 
I, I, I really quick, I spoke to the kids on the bench about being defensive minded, but if there is an opportunity to jump on a loose puck, we, we got to think offensively as well as defensively. Um, I like to be aggressive, extremely aggressive on the, on the penalty kill. My whole theory behind that is, is our penalty kill should dictate where their power play sets up. We don't go into the zone and allow their power play to set up and then try to kill it. We figure out what they're trying to do or, or what they're, what they like to do and try to keep them away from that by being aggressive, by taking uh, cross ice passes away, by taking DDD passes away. And, and Richmond was using a, a variation of an umbrella where they wanted the puck on the top. So as soon as it got there, we wanted to jump that guy quick and we wanted to force him, force him out. So, um, the changes that we made on the bench were because of the situation that we had caught ourselves in in that game. As far as uh, getting the number of shots that we had, uh, you know, Gretzky said it the best. Uh, you know, if you don't shoot the puck, you're not going to score goals, and 100% of the shots that miss the net uh, are never going to go in. So we got to shoot the puck, and we got to look for shot placement. And we've been preaching that since since day one. Um, we, we look for far pad a lot. We look to put a lot of shots off of the pad. Uh, obviously, if we score a goal, great. But if the goalie makes a save and he is lazy on his rebound um, control, a lot of those second opportunities and third opportunities will come from that. And I want to say that's how we did get a goal on Sunday's game on the power play. It started with a with a bad uh, with, on a power play. We had a shot, Mikey. Yeah, Mikey Carr picked up the puck and fed it out front, and, and then um, Nicholas Gray was open to bury it. So we preach shots, and we preach uh, keeping the puck in a position to move it. And if you're stick handling, like Coach Preach said, we, we, we talk to these kids about slowing their hands down and don't stick handle as much, but think about when we have to move it, and, and we always want to keep the puck moving. The faster we move it, the more times that they're going to find themselves out of position, and we're going to have, have a guy open, so... And the uh, last question, we, we usually like to, to pluck a player out that uh, that we called a lot this past weekend and, and one that you haven't mentioned. Um, new to us, there's a, a kid named Liam Walsh. We're not too familiar with his style. Called his name a lot. Seems like a hard worker. Seems like someone that's going to be a, an impact player for you. Can you talk a little bit about his role with your team and uh, and where he stands and what, uh, what, what you expect from him? Oh, while she coming into the season, we we had a lot of high hopes. He played for a select academy, U16 AAAs last year that that ended up winning their league in the in the USPHL Futures Division um, 16 and unders. So coming into it, knowing that he's he's played at a high level of hockey, we had we had high hopes from him. We saw him all summer long. He was here for our college junior development skates, and uh, and he's got a great hockey IQ. So going into that weekend. What I was trying to do is I was trying to have a have an even attack from my first through my third lines. So I was I was placing him with um, Malti and Medeiros. Um, I'm not sure if you know it or a lot of other people know it, but he is uh, he's battling through injuries right now. He has two torn labrums and uh, he does need mm-hmm. surgery right now. We are looking at other things to do to keep him. Uh, as healthy as possible, and, and to keep him playing through the course of the season, and, and think about surgery after the season is over. So, um, you know, if he's healthy, I think he has a lot more jump in his step and a, and a lot more puck protection, as well as he did do. He, he's only skating, or he's only about you know fifty percent right now. Okay. So, um, you know, we have high hopes for Walshing, and Walshing is a part of the future of this program. Uh, like some of the boys said, we are young and we have a lot of 97s on this team. But the 97s that we have, I definitely feel are some of our our better players. Uh, with uh, Devin Malise and and Nick Nick Kaufman and who else is my 97? One other one. Walsh, Malise, and Kaufman are my three 97s. All right. Yeah, well. I I, I do want I do want to get to uh, one one thing to talk about you know leading into the weekend against East Coast um, the emotion factor on your uh, on your bench we saw a flow of emotions uh, mixing it up with Richmond and especially at the end of the uh, third period there of the first game what, what what does that tell you about your squad I mean uh, it, obviously it all started with, uh, with with the contact with Moyer and the repeated contact with Moyer. Uh, during that uh, third period, but um, 
What, what is the message that you're receiving from that kind of emotion from your guys, and how is it going to translate against East Coast, a team that usually rivals uh, P- Potomac quite well? I I never like to see a, a fight, especially in in this league, with it being college prep and, and no fighting. But what I did like, what I did love about that is that we stuck up for one another when when. When something happened, we didn't turn another cheek, and and everybody got in there and 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 sent a quick message to to Richmond that we're not going to tolerate this. I don't care if you're a fourth line guy, if you're a scratch guy, if you're if you're my goaltender. If we feel that you're doing something that that's, that's going to harm us, that's going to hurt us, that that you're going to have to battle all of us. And they and they came together real quick. Um, you know, within that last what was about a minute forty left to go mm-hmm. in the third period, we saw a lot of emotion out of everybody. And and if you watch the game film, everybody on the bench was showing a, a lot of emotion in it. It took a lot out of both coaches to keep the bench mm-hmm. under control and allow the players that were on the ice to to show their emotion. Did they show it in the correct way? Uh, was everything called for that happened? Uh, that's still yet to be determined, but. I did like to see that that we got in there and we stuck up for our our, our uh, goaltender and and allowed the Richmond squad to to know that that stuff's not going to be tolerated and, and and if they do things like that that uh, I don't care who's on the ice when when that sort of thing happens that there's going to be somebody's going to have to pay for it. All right, this coming weekend you got East Coast and what is the key to success against the East Coast? Eagles. They are currently 0-4 right now. They are hungry for their first win. You guys are hungry for your first win. If there is one thing that your team must do to get a victory, uh, possibly four points out of this weekend, a sweep the weekend, what do you guys got to do? We got to play with with heart, and we have to have a high level of compete. Um, I've been I've been talking a lot about our compete level mm-hmm. and about playing with a, a certain amount of passion. We saw passion this weekend. Uh, we had a long talk with them uh, before uh, Monday's Tuesday's practice about our, our compete level and competing for every puck. And and we have to bring a, a high level of compete, and we have to play with some passion and play with some heart this weekend to get our, our first couple of Ws. Um, I know the East Coast guys are pretty well, uh, Jocelyn and, and Lincoln Flag down there, and I believe that they're preaching the same thing to their boys about playing uh, a little bit more uh, hungry and having a hunger aspect to their game and, and wanting to fight for every puck. And we're going to have to get out there and we're going to have to match the intensity and, and we're going to have to, to weather the storm a little bit there in the first couple of minutes, seeing that they're, they're going to be in front of their home fans. But if we stick to our guns, if we stick to the system and we compete for the puck and, and we compete up and down the ice, both on offense and on defense, I definitely feel that, that uh, East Coast is going to be in a run for their money this weekend. All right, Coach. Thanks for your time and uh, good luck this weekend. So there we have everybody's thoughts, and, uh, you know, it's time to move on and uh, kind of hit the reset button here. I know that, you know, uh, everybody was talking about the emotions uh, involved and uh, Shrems. East Coast, you know, emotionally for us who have seen East Coast for the last couple of seasons, uh, we've got a good relationship with the organization, but uh, obviously uh, we'd like to see the results on the ice for the Potomac Patriots uh, always end up in the W column, but, uh, you know, obviously with them, losing out to East Coast in the playoffs last season, I think this would be the right moment to kind of, you know, sour their season and make them go 0-6 to start. Yeah, you know, and, and, and we always said, you know, what team matches up the best with Potomac, and for the past two seasons that we've been there, it's been East Coast, just the, the style of play, um, the, the competitiveness, and, and you know, it, it's it's about that time, like you said, though, to, to take that step up. Um, I, I got a different feeling about this team. I'm, I'm sure you do too. That uh, there's big things ahead for for what uh, for what Newton and, and the boys can do here. And um, I think it starts this weekend. I, I think they come out of there with two wins this weekend and uh, get themselves back to 500 and, and use that momentum to go right back down there the following week and uh, and do it all again in the showcase. So yeah, and, and that's, that's just it. You know, with the showcase coming up too. Uh, you know. You get to see the teams that you don't normally see, and uh, you, you build from there as far as, you know, uh, taking the showcase format to its advantage with the two 25-minute halves versus the three 20-minute period right. that you have before you. But uh, obviously, instead of saying that we match up well with East Coast, we would like to say that we match up well with a team like Palm Beach or, uh, you know, uh, Florida. The stronger teams from the South. So, uh, you know, obviously that's 
kind of the goal here. And obviously, the goal is already in their minds, uh, Coach Newton and Coach Creech, to bring these boys to national. That is their goal. That is what they're targeting. So, uh, obviously, the East Coast is just a, a step, stepping stone in that direction. And, you know, plenty more hockey to go. But uh, it's easier to rebound from being down 0-2 than it is 0-4 yep. uh, for obvious reasons. Yep, and I think they have it in them. You know, it's his first time at home this weekend. You know, they had uh, they have uh, you know just just new team. Got to work some things out with the lines. Got to figure out who gels with who. Um, we we know the talent is there. It's it's just a matter of sticking with it and and waiting till it all comes together. But uh, I think it's going to come together a lot sooner than later. Yeah, and I'm definitely excited to see what kind of line combinations he rolls with this coming weekend um, and moving forward because, you know, you take a look at players that he does have in his roster, such as Medeiros and Maltz, uh, and then with Addison, and then the returners like Gray and, uh, you know, McDonald uh, on the back on the blue line, and then Boyer between the pipes having him back. Uh, he was kind of a last-second uh, addition to this team. But, um, you know, and then, of course, Mendoza, uh, during the uh, Red Blue Charity game, it was thought that he was going to be moved up to the wing, uh, somewhere up on the left wing there, but he had to be brought back for defense uh, just to kind of fill out the big six. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, there's a lot of good depth on his team because then you got players that have continually grown uh, into the role, such as Mikey Carr, um, and then you got a defenseman coming up with Nick Ludemann. We saw him start out with the Empire team last year, and now, uh, obviously, he finished with the, uh, the elite squad, and you know, players are rising through the ranks. It's just how they come together as a team yeah. is really what will define them as, uh, you know, their fate will be in the end, whether they make it to nationals or not. Yeah, I think, though, I think it's, it's for me personally, it's the perfect blend for a team. Some returners, players you're familiar with on the opposite side, the guys who came up from Hampton Roads, and then the uh, the newcomers. You know, it's, it's, it, it's a good blend of, of what's needed in order to keep things fresh, but you know, keep, keep things competitive too. And you know, you got a good you got a good coach and an assistant coach behind the bench, and, and their expectations are clear. And uh, I, I kind of like what what Coach Newton said about um, you know holding players accountable, and, and and each goal that's scored against them, you know, it's 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 somebody's responsibility, and, and it doesn't sound like he's too afraid to to put it on them or on himself if it's the system that's not working so um it's nice to have that level-headed coach and hopefully he's got uh good things in store for this team well speaking of hope let's hope that next week we're talking about two potomac patriots victories over the east coast eagles but we will see how that plays out saturday and sunday they will be down in east coast and we will join uh, everybody back here after they come back from the polar ice house we will talk with them again next week and get their full reaction from the players to the coaches, and we will bring it back here on the Patriots playback. Well, we'll see you next week, everybody. This is David Stearns for Brian Schramm saying, have a great evening, everybody, and as always, don't stop believing.